Locate the two transistors, Q1 and Q2, and carefully bend the transistor leads as shown here. Bend leads about 1 16th of an inch, or 1.5 millimeter, from the transistor body. Place the wooden base on the table in front of you as shown. Place the printed circuit board on the wooden base so that all the pilot holes are visible through the printed circuit board. Position the printed circuit board in the base so that the key outline is closest to you and the connections labeled battery connection are on your left. Insert a number six by one half inch screw in the screw hole in the lower right of the printed circuit board. Tighten screw until it contacts the printed circuit board. It should be snug, but don't over tighten. Make sure all the holes still line up. Install a number six by one half inch long screw with a washer into the printed circuit board at each of the locations shown in the picture. Tighten these screws until they just contact the printed circuit board, then loosen them three or four turns. Locate resistor R1, which has a value of 220 ohms. This is indicated by color bands of red, red, brown, and gold. Place one lead of this resistor under the washer at position 1. Form a half loop of wire around the screw. Tighten the screw and cut off the excess wire to prevent electrical shorts. The other lead should be positioned under the washer at position 3, which will remain loose. Locate the transistor that has the center lead pointing towards the flat side and position one lead under the washer at position 2 is illustrated on the printed circuit board. Tighten the screw. The opposite lead should be under the washer at position 3. At position 3, verify that the transistor lead and the resistor lead are under the washer on opposite sides of the screw and that the middle transistor lead is over position 6. Tighten the screw at position 3. Cut off the excess lead. Install a number six by one half inch screw and two washers at position six. The center transistor lead should be under the bottom washer. Locate the resistor R2, which has a value of 10,000 ohms and color bands of brown, black, orange, and gold. And place one lead under the washer at position four. Form a half loop around the screw Tighten the screw and cut off excess wire to prevent shorts. The other lead should be positioned between the washers at position 6, which will remain loose. Locate the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, C1, and place one lead under the washer at location 5. Form a half loop around the screw, tighten, and cut off the excess wire. The other lead should be positioned between the washers at location 6. The screw with three leads at position 6 can now be tightened. Trim the leads to prevent shorts. Locate the resistor R4, which has a value of 82 ohms, and color bands of gray, red, black, and gold, and place one lead under the washer at position 7. Form a half loop around the screw. Tighten the screw and cut off the excess wire to prevent electrical shorts. The other lead should be positioned under the washer at position 9, which will remain loose. Locate the transistor that has the center lead pointing away from the flat side, which is identified as Q2 on the circuit board, and position one lead under the washer at position 8 is illustrated on the printed circuit board. Tighten the screw. The opposite lead should be under the washer at position 9. At position 9, verify that the transistor lead 
and the resistor lead are under the washer on opposite sides of the screw and that the middle transistor lead is over position 12. Tighten the screw at position 9. Cut off the excess lead. Install a number 6 one half inch long screw and two washers at position 12. The center transistor lead should be under the bottom washer. Locate the resistor R3, which has a value of 10,000 ohms and color bands of brown, black, orange, and gold, and place one lead under the washer at position 10. Form a half loop around the screw, tighten the screw, and cut off excess wire to prevent shorts. The other lead should be positioned between the washers at position 12, which will remain loose. Locate the 0.1 microfarad capacitor, C2, and place one lead under the washer at location 11. Form a half loop around the screw, tighten, and cut off excess wire. The other lead should be positioned between the washers at location 12. The screw with three leads at position 12 can now be tightened. Trim the leads to prevent shorts. Check your work by gently probing all connections with a pencil or toothpick to make sure there are no loose wires at any of the locations. Locate the resistor R5, which has a value of 220 ohms and color bands of red, red, brown, and gold and place one lead under the washer at position 13. Form a half loop around the screw. Tighten the screw and cut off excess wire to prevent electrical shorts. The other lead should be positioned under the washer at position 14, which will remain loose. Although it is not necessary to do so, the battery connector wires can be shortened if desired. Locate the battery connector and place the red lead under the washer at position 14 on the opposite side of the screw from the resistor lead. Tighten the screw and trim excess wire to prevent short circuits. Install the black lead from the battery connector under the washer at position 15 and tighten the screw. Fasten the battery clip to the printed circuit board using the two number four by one half inch long screws. Fasten the key arm to the printed circuit board with two number six by three quarter inch long screws and using two A32 nuts as spacers under the key arm. Check your work. Look over the finished assembly and make sure that all of the components are in their proper place see that the transistors are oriented correctly and that there are no leads left long and touching other screws. Connect the 9 volt battery and place it in the clip and enjoy your new Morris Assistive Technology Trainer.